Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Lisa Jans and as you can see, I'm not here on my own because it's not just about job coaching today. No, no, no. I have a special guest here, Suzanne Dinter, who's expat transition coach or also a transition coach for expats. Hello, Suzanne. How are you today? I'm fine. Thank you, Lisa. Thanks ever so much for inviting me along. Yeah, I'm so excited and happy that you took out the time of your uh, busy afternoon to talk to me. And I have um, a couple of questions that I wanted to ask you mm -hmm. so that everybody that has the opportunity to watch this video here uh, gets an understanding of what you're doing and um, how you can help them with. And obviously you're an expert yourself. So we will dive a little bit into that story as well. So the people get to know you and your background a little bit. So for everybody that is watching today, if you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the comments. And if we have time in between, I will um, yeah, get them on stage and we will try our best to answer them. All right. So Suzanne, you are in Germany now and you have been in Germany for quite some time, actually. Right. What is That's your nice. story? Why are you here? Right. Well, um, yes, I came here a very long time ago, um, 28 years ago, so 1994. Wow. So it's like, oh, my God. Um, I came here the I moved to Germany the day after my graduation ceremony from university. Okay. Um, I studied German and I did a semester abroad in Heidelberg and mm -hmm. I loved it. I felt so free in Germany and I and I kind of got a handle on the language as well. I was not very good at learning vocabulary at school and at university so I thought well if you don't learn it in Germany you never will yeah and, and I loved it so much when I did that semester abroad though when I um I decided that when I graduated I went back to London to finish my studies and I decided right well you're going to move there straight away otherwise you'll settle down get a job and then you'll yeah. never move there so do it straight away so I literally moved over the day after my graduation ceremony from university wow. um, you know one day I had my mortarboard on and the next day I was in a plane it was July so it was this month 28 years ago oh, yeah. um, and um, I said to everybody that I would stay as long as I still had fun yeah um, and so yeah <laughs> obviously still yeah, yeah, so fun, fun. <laughs> Good. Yeah, I, I literally came with a suitcase, a promise of a job in a language school okay. and a couple of hundred pounds in my bank account. Mm -hmm. um, and I came to Castle um, in the center of Germany because okay. uh, my then boyfriend, now husband, mm -hmm. um, comes from a, um, a small town nearby. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I ended up here. And yeah, I've been here ever since. So it's um, yeah, it's been a, an amazing journey. Yeah, and it's it's so um, really nice and, and really cool to see for me that you said you're staying as long as you have fun and you've ha you've been having fun for 28 years, which is a very good example for everybody that is interested in moving to Germany and who hasn't really done the move yet um, or who is currently here and uh, thinking about, oh, is that the right thing or not? But I think it's a very good um, uh, yeah, idea to say, I stay as long as I have fun, as long as I'm enjoying the time, because there are always ups and downs in every journey. But uh, it, it gives a lot of hope, I think, that you can have fun in Germany for 28 years and even go, keep on going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean yes there have been ups and downs and of course I was single back then I mean you know I had my boyfriend yeah. but there was I had no ties and no children yeah. like I do now yeah. and um and no mortgage and and, and all the things yeah, like that but they things. kind of like accumulated over the time so I was free to be able to make that decision mm -hmm. um and I must say that I was quite surprised at um I, I came over and I quickly did a, a TEFL course to learn how to teach English as a foreign language because mm -hmm. I thought, well, you know, if I don't get a um, like a you know a, a graduate job when I come over, yeah. then I can start doing that. And I was quite surprised actually at the level of English over here. I thought it would be much higher. I, mm -hmm. you know, I had been to um, Heidelberg for that semester, but it was like full of students from all over the place, so I didn't yeah. really get a gauge on how like the average office workers English was 
yeah and what level it was I was quite surprised actually how um it was lower than I expected because I thought mm. it would be like you know Belgium and Holland and Scandinavian countries but then mm. I realized that the reason why oh this is my theory over the years is because that television is dubbed over yeah. here <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Totally. yeah there, there are no there are no mm. subtitles um yeah things are not shown in the original language. And I really feel that that's had a big influence on how Germany has become yeah. or, or not become a, a, a bilingual country, you know, mm -hmm. um, or a multilingual country. So, you know, the, they dubbed them really, really well, the films yeah. and everything. But it's oh, yeah. still really quite difficult to find stuff on Amazon Prime or on TV to, to see it in the original language. I get a bit frustrated with that sometimes, but I'm, I'm not a Netflix fan, but um, I'm sure you can find it more there. But on Amazon Prime, I often like, I must be looking for a needle in a haystack or, or you know, some very specific uh, taste that I have. But yeah, I find that difficult sometimes to find stuff in original language. So yeah, yeah, that was my yeah. theory. And that, uh, that's very interesting that you that you say that because when I first um, went abroad, I was 17 years old and I, I did a high school year in the United States. And I was okay. so surprised how um, how bad my English was compared to people from Scandinavia, for example. And then yeah. uh, uh, and then definitely we are so spoiled here in germany with everything being dubbed and i don't like it i really like watching tv series or movies or uh, films in general in their original language yeah. um and uh what people from especially from scandinavia told me that they had english teachers who were native speakers and that's oh. not happening in our German schools. In our German schools, yeah. everything that the language teachers have to do, at, at least in, in public schools, um, is I think they have to spend one year abroad to learn that language. But it's German yeah. natives. And um, and then also, when I remember when I came, came back, I was so frustrated because I was losing so much of my vocabulary because we only had like two or four hours of, of English uh, per week. And then after that, nothing anymore. So I trained yeah. myself to really watch movies in English, read books in English and so on. But it's it's not mandatory. And that's why I can totally understand that it's a very difficult thing to see um yeah the how the english language has developed and that germany is not bilingual and there are still i yeah. i mean there are still people also uh, my age and even younger who are still afraid of speaking english it's just i mean you yeah. will always find people like that but you would think okay nowadays because english is speaking all over the world uh, spoken all over the world um that it's quite normal but it, it actually isn't in germany yeah, and I think that's one of the things that people um, assume when they come to Germany and then they're quite shocked at how quickly they have to learn the German language because they're like, oh, I thought I'd get get away with, yeah. with English everywhere. Um, you, you can, I think, in larger cities, but mm -hmm. um, yeah. not really in everyday life. I mean, when you go to the authorities, when you're registering yeah. yourself and all that kind yeah. of stuff, you really need to be able to speak German or have some kind of level or somebody mm -hmm. to help you because it's really quite tough and I found that really really difficult mm -hmm. when I first came over so yeah that's one of the one of the things that I found uh, was a bit of a shock to the system yeah, yeah. and uh, I think uh, many people can relate <laughs> to that shock to the system because uh, as you said they they think that everything works in English and sometimes it can happen but especially mm. if you go to more rural areas it's very mm. difficult you need to have German in order to integrate also into the community and to okay. have and find some friends also around in with neighbors as well so um yeah mm -hmm. Kerstin says hello you two uh, hi Kerstin thank you for uh, joining us here so the next question that I have is um related to your childhood dream of a career what did you think what did you want to become do you remember what you wanted to be when you were younger um i always knew what i didn't want to become <laughs> That's a good start. Um, i can't really remember i think my I think the first thing i wanted to become was a hairdresser because my cousin who was about six years or is about six years older than me she was a hairdresser mm -hmm. and um and so i aspired to be a hairdresser for a short space of time but that was only because of her um 
yeah it was kind of like I always knew what I didn't want to do and when I was leaving school after my A levels like at the age of 18 in in the UK um, I knew that I didn't want to work in insurance I didn't want to work in a bank and I didn't want to work in a civil service and I ended up in a bank because I just didn't know what I wanted and this Mm -hmm. is something that I've learned through my hypnotherapy um, or my hypnosis coaching um skills and training and what i help my clients with is you have to get clear on what you want to be able to create it in your life Mm -hmm. and for many many years i was you know i was almost proud of the fact that i know what i don't want yeah i never kind of like nobody said well what do you want then or maybe they (laughs) did i was too stubborn to to point it out i was almost kind of proud of it and the Mm -hmm. thing is and that's one of the first things i work with my clients on is like they say you know i don't you know, I want to get off this roller coaster of emotions and I'm feeling so lonely and I'm feeling so this and I'm feeling so that and I'm feeling so angry. I'm like, okay, that's that's great. That's fine. And that's wonderful that you know that. Now let's flip the coin and say, what do you want to achieve? How mm. do you want to feel? Yeah. Because hypnosis is all about feeling. And, and they're like, well, I don't want to be so stressed. And I'm like, okay, let's turn that around. So like, I have to coach them at the beginning to kind of like, be able to articulate exactly what they do want so I'm saying so what's your opposite of stress would you like to feel calm you know I don't want to put the words in their mouth I, I would like to use no. their language because that's the most powerful language to to use mm-hmm. with the clients is to help them to achieve what they want to achieve is their own language and they say okay yeah let's feel calm and relaxed and confident and to deal with the daily stresses of life really easily and I'm like okay that's great and then you know and but it, sometimes it needs a bit of training to be able to um articulate what you do want so I know exactly yeah. where they're coming from when they do that because that was that was something that I did for many many years before I discovered hypnosis so yeah, yeah. so that's uh, and it's also I think it's a good start knowing what you don't what you don't want so yeah. that's uh, something if people are in a middle of a career crisis for example that's something that I always say it's always good to find out what it is that you don't like and um but it's i think it's more difficult when you're younger and don't have any experiences and then but you know okay i don't want this and that you can feel kind of lost if you don't know what you want so that now that brings me to that um, really interesting question you say that you are an expert expat transition coach and i know that you help expats immigrants internationals with transitioning and hypno hypnosis and hypno coaching what does that actually mean what does that entail right okay well um hypnosis is all about feeling um Mm -hmm. many other modalities that people use like regular coaching or um talk therapy um they talk and they're using their thinking brain. So mm-hmm. they know logically that they want, you know, they're, he- they're here and they want to get here. Mm-hmm. And so they say, all I need to do then, and they think their way, they try to think their way out of the problem and try to think their way into a solution. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, if your feelings are not on board with the things that you, you're thinking of doing and move to take action and move forwards, then you either won't be able to do it at all, they will, the feelings will hold you back and you say, oh, no, I really can't do that. Yeah. Or you'll push through and it will feel really, really hard and you'll kind of go two steps forward and one step back because your feelings are not on board. Yeah. So what hypnosis helps you to do is to understand and to listen, really. First of all, to listen to what your feelings are telling you. So many people push their feelings away and I'll just push on through and, you know, I'll just take action and I'll, you know, and they beat themselves up for not being able to do what they want to be, achieve. Yeah. And, but it's their feelings that are holding them back because you're not listening to them. You know, it's mm-hmm. like, it's like that annoying little kid on the playground that comes and taps you on the shoulder and says, and you're just like, oh, go away, go away. You know, that's the mm-hmm. feelings. And you, yeah. they tap you on the shoulder again, you know, a few months later, or a couple of years later, and you're like, no, just leave me alone. And then when you yeah. finally just give them some time and turn around and say, okay, I'm, I'm ready to listen. Tell me what you want. And they just say, can I just play with you for a bit? Can I just tell you how, how I'm feeling right now? Oh, okay. Oh, I get it now. And mm-hmm. then they leave you alone and then you can move forwards and you can yeah. do what you need to do. 
Um, why help people, you know, and give them that space. I hold that space for them so that they can tap into their feelings. And it's not, it's not, it's, it's, it's anything but scary. It's a really liberating feeling to know that oh, I'm finally listening to what has been holding me back all this time. And sometimes it's like just really small things. But once you understand that on a deep emotional level, then you can let it go. And yeah. then you can take action. That's what you need your thinking brain for, is to take action on the yeah. things that you want to achieve. But if your feelings are not on board, it's not going to happen. And yeah. this is the thing that happens really, really quickly. When you understand what your feelings are trying to tell you and mm -hmm. you can let go of some of the difficult things, then you can move forward in leaps and bounds. Um, mm -hmm. It's just when I discovered hypnosis for myself, um, a number of years ago, I was just like, I was flabbergasted wow. at how fast yeah. I found solutions and how quickly I let go of things. And I was like, I have to become a hypnosis coach yeah. to, be able to help other people to do this because, you know, in the past, like 25 years ago, just a few years after I'd arrived here, I had a nervous breakdown. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, with my not very good German at the time, I did two years of you know talk therapy with a oh. local uh, therapist in germany oh wow yeah. <laughs> because there was no other option back then yeah and it helped a little bit but it was also the beginning of my own personal development journey like where i started reading tons of books the first book i read was to feel the fear in it and do it anyway oh. and uh, one absolute classic mm. and i but i can't tell you after two years of weekly talk therapy what had actually changed what I'd achieved mm -hmm. now hypnosis helps you to achieve things in a really short space of time it's solution focused you know exactly what you're aiming for how you want to feel and then we work through it step by step and mm -hmm. my clients like 99% of my clients feel a massive difference after the first session oh, and then wow. we do a program you know it depends on the actual issue that the client comes to me with is mm -hmm. how long the program is but I normally do up to 12 sessions but that's yeah. just three months yeah that's nothing and then yeah. they you know they, they don't have time to you know do two years of therapy every week to yeah. be you know they need a solution right now because yeah. you know there's a crisis and they've tried yeah. all that stuff often and you know and then they unfortunately hypnosis is often the last resort until they discover hypnosis for themselves and, and make those changes and then they go to hypnosis like every single time but yeah until they get to that point where they try it for the first time um it's often like, i've tried everything and i'm like okay but you haven't done this before and you don't try hypnosis you do hypnosis yeah. <laughs> and um and then it changes your life so yeah i've just yeah. can't stop wow. talking about it. I love it so much <laughs> there are so many so many things that you've just mentioned that uh i'm so excited to to talk to you about this topic so I, um, especially this focus on feeling and not looking away from those feelings, that's actually, that's also something that I've come across that actually helps you transform. And if oh, you don't, definitely. if you try to suppress it uh, all the time, then uh, you won't get anywhere. You can have, as that's that's also this, this fact of you always have to think positively, right? It's like, yeah. a, uh, it doesn't really help if you are, uh, if you with, Try to think and force yourself to think positively. What you're feeling is completely the opposite. You're going into different directions. It's not going exactly. to get you anywhere. Yeah, so, that's I compare it to weeding a garden. You know, I help yeah. them to, to weed out the stuck emotions, oh, the yeah. difficult emotions. Weed them out first. Yeah. And then you can plant the seeds of yeah. the things that you want to achieve in that beautiful flower bed that mm -hmm. has been weeded. If you try to plant positive you know, try to force your way with affirmations and, and things like that before you've weeded your feelings garden or whatever you'd like to yeah. call it, then, yeah. you know, there might be a little bit of success and then, you know, but there will yeah. be lots of kind of like dead, half dead flowers because the weeds will, will take over. And so yeah. it's just giving yourself that space. And sometimes you just need accountability and that's who I am. I'm a facilitator. I don't do okay. the work for you. You do the work yourself. You have to trust the process and do a little bit of work when you're with me. But it's so fast and it's it's so life transforming that, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's really worth it. But you have to take that little bit of time to to go there. And I'm there. I can I'm holding your hand the whole whole of the way. 
um, to yeah. be able to understand what these feelings all these years often have been trying to tell you. Yeah. And do you remember how you discovered this topic of hypnosis? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Um, I signed up for an online course. Um, okay. And it was, I think it was, yeah, it was like one of the first few sessions. It was a group thing. Um, mm -hmm. So it's quite generic. Um, and there was a session on overcoming the fear of criticism. Ah, I see. And mm -hmm. that was, oh, that really, <sighs> really blew my mind. Oh, Literally after yeah. that session, I was just like, okay. Oh. And, and the next day I had an, a little office job at that time. And I was walking down the road going, Come on, come on, give me some, give me some criticism. I, like, so <laughs> so real, but I had around me. I just felt so confident. It was like it's just gonna bounce off and deflect. <laughs> and it it felt wow. so amazing. And so that was <laughs> that yeah. was how I felt after one of yeah. the first hypnosis sessions. But I I think I discovered hypnosis of a couple of years pre previous to that, uh, where I was um trying to lose weight after the birth of my second son. Okay. And I'd done Weight Watchers the first time around after my first son. And I'd, I, you know, I got down to my goal weight and I said to the Weight Watchers people, I said, great, you know, what do I do now? And, the, and they're like, okay, you're in your maintenance um, um, period now. And, you, and I said, so what does that mean? And they're like, well, you have to carry on counting points. And I'm like, why? <laughs> you know, I'm like, I really I will look at like, like an eating disorder if I do, if I do that. And so with the second child, I was like, Mm, there must be a better way to do this. So that's how I discovered it. I just bought a book and there was a CD in the back and it was very generic. It was like talking about, you know, like giving up dairy and gluten and stuff. And I didn't want to do that, but I just ignored those suggestions because you can, you know, you, it's not like you, yeah. you have to take on what the person says. If you don't agree with it, then, you, you know, you're more in control yeah. in hypnosis than you are in your everyday life. I say everybody else is walking around in a trance. I actually dehypnotize people so that they stop doing the things that they don't want to do anymore yeah. and, and and learn to do the things that they want to do. So yeah. um, and I had success with that. And I was like, wow, you know, so this that was the beginning of the journey. But the big the big boom change uh, was when I yeah overcame the fear of criticism with that. Yeah. Session. It yeah. was just like amazing. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that was part of the reason was like, oh, my goodness, I have to do this. Yeah. I have to change. Yeah. <laughs> it's such a good experience that you've had there, because I think that sometimes and you can correct me if I'm wrong. I think that sometimes people are afraid of hypnosis because they yeah. uh, remember these wild talk shows back in the 90s, probably when there were people on stage and they were uh, they were hypnotized and then they would lift their arm all the time, even though they are not knowing what is going on. Um, but I find it very, very um, helpful. And the, the key point here that you say you hold the space for your clients so that they can let go, so that they can yeah. feel it and so that they yeah feel secure and safe around you and not yeah. think okay what is happening in hypnosis so it's not that you're sleeping right when you're doing no, that no, no, no. yeah if you sleep with the nervous system um yeah. you're deeply relaxed mm -hmm. if you want to achieve anything you have to have to be relaxed to be able to yes. do it if you're all yeah. tensed up and like, yeah. you're not breathing properly and you're not focusing you're not concentrating properly um hypnosis is deep relaxation yeah with your eyes closed Most of the time, some people can leave their eyes open, but I suggest you close them just so that you can focus better on the inside. So yeah. that's all, you know, all hypnosis is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, yeah, people have seen shows, and show hypnosis, it's still hypnosis, but the person on the stage clucking like a chicken, they've already given their permission before the show, saying, yeah, 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 yeah. I want to go up on stage. And oh, it's yeah. like, will you do anything that I say? Yeah, yeah, of course I will. Mm. But... If the stage hypnotist said to them something that they didn't agree with or they weren't prepared to do, then they wouldn't have to do it. They wouldn't do it. Oh, that's wow. What we okay. We don't, that's what we don't know. It's like, yeah. they just, you know, they're either exhibitionists or they just want to let their hair down on stage and say, oh, you know, to their friends afterwards, like, oh, it was a hypnosis. It wasn't really yeah. me. But it was. But they were just letting yeah. their hair down. But that's not yeah. what, you know, therapeutic or coaching hypnosis is yeah. all about. Obviously, I want mm -hmm. to help the people achieve what they want to achieve. And, I'm, you know, there's absolutely no, you know, it's just a complete waste of time and money if I'm going to, like, 
suggests that you collect like a chicken you're like really do I really want to do that it's, it, I'm yeah. not going to do that so yeah it's, it's yeah. a different thing but they're very very skilled hypnotists who do that on stage but that's got nothing to do and, and, and yeah. you know to do with with real you know therapeutic hypnosis and you know people see films where people are controlled yeah. by a hypnotist that's rubbish it's absolute rubbish it's so misrepresented on yeah on the media and in films and unfortunately, mm. I have to kind of overcome those hurdles sometimes with people who've never done hypnosis before. Um, I've written mm. blog posts about it. They're on my website and I've done videos mm. and I've also um, filmed like sessions with clients and put those on YouTube so that, you know, people can see, oh, right, it's it's something totally different. And you're more in control when you're focusing on the inside. You, you're in touch with your feelings. You Like I say, I de-hypnotize people so that they can achieve what they want to achieve and they're waking up from this doing everything the way everybody else does thing thing yeah you know? yeah like right. they're waking up and going like how do I actually I want to do things you know my parents have said I should be doing yes. this and my friends and, and society mm -hmm. and my culture says I should be doing this but actually I don't want to be doing this and it's like aha yeah. that's where I can come in and help them okay. to achieve what they want to achieve you know sometimes it is about creating healthy natural boundaries where you yeah. say no and where you say well no this isn't me anymore and I want to do it a different way but it, mm -hmm. it hypnosis helps you to build the confidence to be able to do that and to let go of the things that are, that you know are not serving you anymore and really the bottom line is learning to love yourself more and that's what I yes. help people to do so yeah. that they achieve what they want to achieve so yeah Oh, that's so wonderful. Yeah. And it's, I mean, for everybody that is still skeptical about it, they can, um, as you said, many of your clients have already uh, big breakthroughs after the first session. So that's yeah. very helpful that you say that uh, you adjust the, the process according to the needs of your clients. So if they just need one session, they can just get a taste for it, yeah. for example, or just have well, these 12 weeks yeah. but that makes more sense right to really yeah. get to the point where they want to have a real transformation it just takes time to also process what you've learned and sometimes you don't really understand what is going on maybe you haven't felt anything during the session mm -hmm. but then later on you're more incorporating what what you what what ha you've practiced yeah yeah I mean I don't do single sessions anymore apart from okay, with good. previous clients because yeah. um yeah people were getting big breakthroughs in the first session yet yeah. the work is still not finished yeah. um and I you see. feel really great after it but then you realize mm -hmm. oh okay there's still something else there's, to do yeah. so yeah. I do a minimum of four sessions with my clients okay. but on the consultation call I you know I gauge yeah. and I use my expertise and, and gauge what they want to change and uh, how they want to be. And then I gauge how many sessions I estimate. And sometimes, you know, they have a few sessions or a couple, like one or two sessions left over at yeah. the end and they feel like really great. And it's like, do you actually need those sessions? And they're like, no. Nope. And I'm like, okay, well, we can keep those for up to a year afterwards yeah. if you have something else popping up. So I've had clients who have become pregnant and then they're like, oh, I'd like yeah. to you know, connect with my baby or, you know, I want a really great birth. Yeah, I had that recently or somebody's applied for a job and they're like, okay, I'm ready now, like to, to prepare myself for the interview, that kind of thing. So, you know, they don't get wasted, but it's just like, yeah. oh, actually, I feel so good now. I, yeah. you know, I, I don't need that anymore. Or another client um, losing weight, you know, she had one or two sessions left over. She's like, oh, I'm doing really, really fine now. Um, mm -hmm. I've got my, you know, my mindset sorted out. And um, um, and then they book maybe a late a bit later if they've got a different issue or a wobble or something like that. So but that yeah, I never sense. do I never do single sessions anymore with with uh, yeah. first time clients. And that's I mean that that makes sense because they um, it's great that they have a breakthrough in the first uh, session. But as you say, that's something that I see in my coaching as well that a real transformation that uh, cannot be done just within one hour. You can get a glimpse of what is happening, but then yeah. if we want to uh, really achieve and work on the things that are bothering you or you want to transform, then it needs a little yeah. bit more time. So that makes total sense. Okay. Yeah, oh, but, you know, this like, is so exciting. But, you know, these, these, these things didn't come overnight, these issues and yeah. these problems. And yeah. so, you know, they're not going to go overnight necessarily. Exactly. 
Yeah. But three months is, you know, if, if it's a maximum of two or sessions, that's nothing in comparison yeah. to how long often people have had these yeah. issues. So I still find yeah. that's a really, really uh, short space of time. So, yeah. Especially when you're also thinking about people going to therapy as like talk therapy, what you mentioned earlier, that can take years sometimes. Yeah. And they, and I mean, the transformation in such a short amount of time, that's really, really cool. I, yeah. So, wow, that's really wonderful. So how can people contact you? Where can people find you if they need your help? Right. Well, uh, my website is uh, my name, suzannedinter.com. Mm -hmm. and uh, spelt the French way with a Z, not an S, <laughs> the German way. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I'm also on LinkedIn. I think I'm the only Suzanne Dinter on there. Mm -hmm. And I'm on Facebook as well. I'm the only Suzanne Dinter on that. Uh, yeah, I also have a YouTube channel, which is like, yeah, has a few videos, um, nothing, nothing um, regular that I post out there, but who knows? And uh, yeah, I have yeah. blogs and stuff. So, you know, on my website, there's a, there's a link to, to um, book a consultation call. If anybody wants to talk to me about what they could possibly achieve through working with me, then yeah, that's... Um, You know, I, what I do is I help people get off the emotional roller coaster of, you know, when they move abroad and they're like, whoa, this is like, you know, I'm feeling really angry all the time or I'm feeling yeah. so sad or I'm feeling lonely or whatever. I help them get off that emotional roller coaster so that they can feel stable, confident and um, feel like themselves again. That's, you know, the, the biggest thing that most of my clients have said is I just want to feel like myself again. And that's yeah. how I help them to do it. Yeah. Yeah, because that's the, the biggest difficulty you feel that there is some sort of stress inside of you or you feel some mm. sort of tension but you don't know where it's coming from you just don't feel like yourself so it's really yeah. good that they now have an address where they can or whom to approach so that's wonderful uh yeah so and uh, for everybody that is watching the video you can find all of the links to suzanne's profiles uh, below the video Feel free to reach out to her. She just told you how you can connect with her. And a little sneak peek from our side. Suzanne is also part of the Welcome to Germany Summit in 2022, which is happening on the 29th of September. And you can stay very um, tuned for that and be get excited because I'm, I am very excited about what Suzanne is going to share with us on that day. So, Suzanne, thank you so much for taking the time today. I have so many more questions. I <laughs> Maybe we have to do another session at some point. So thank you so yeah, much, and you. I wish you a wonderful afternoon. Thank you so much, Lisa, and yeah, take care. <laughs> Bye. Bye.